It's 9.52. We can stay with that theme of amazing pictures uh, and talk about Jupiter because Jupiter's mysterious storm, the red spot, the great red spot, has captivated scientists for well, more than 200 years we've known mm. about it. Now yeah. we can see it a bit more clearly. Exactly. The NASA spacecraft Juno has been orbiting the planet for more than a year. Earlier this week, it got closer than any craft has managed to before, sending back some rather exciting new images of the giant storm. And we're going to have a look at them, being talked through them by uh, Juno mission scientist, Dr Jonathan Nichols, who's here to uh, explain all. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, for, thanks for coming in. How much do these matter then, these pictures? How, how important are they? These are incredible new images of the Great Red Spot. Juno has passed closer to the Great Red Spot than any other spacecraft before. And the images that it sent back are about 10 times more detailed than what we've had before. So they're telling us a lot of new details about how the Great Red Spot works. OK, how does it work? What is it? The Great Red Spot is a, a huge fountain of gas inside Jupiter, or in the atmosphere of Jupiter. And, it, it, and it's the, one of the most iconic storms in the solar system. If you ask anybody to name a feature on Jupiter, then they'll probably mention the Great Red Spot. Uh, but it's still very mysterious. It's, it's like a hurricane on the Earth, but not quite the same. A hurricane needs a, um, an ocean uh, to, to keep going like on the Earth, but there is no ocean on Jupiter. It, there's no solid surface. So we don't really understand how the Great Red Spot has managed to survive for so long. So what do we know in terms of a storm? Uh, bring it to life for us, because the most we've probably experienced in this country is, what, 80 to 100, 100 mile per hour winds, um, and, which seem pretty ferocious. Well, the storm, the winds on the Great Red Spot go around at about 400 miles an hour. The Great Red Spot itself is much larger than the Earth. You could comfortably fit the Earth inside of it. It's getting in, you smaller. You could put Earth inside yeah. that storm. Yeah, it's, really? it's huge. It really is mind-boggling. Um, it's been getting smaller over the last uh, 50 years or so. We've seen it shrink by about half its size. So we've, we've already lost a, a, an Earth size on the Great Red Spot. Um, but we, we still don't understand how it works. So will these pictures give us greater understanding? I mean, well, what happens to them now? Where, where do you get stuck into the data? Yeah, so the pictures themselves tell us about uh, the wind flow inside the Great Red Spot. We can see fluffy clouds, we can see waves, we can see vortices inside the Great Red Spot. But that's, not, that, that's only the very top layer. Juno has a very special ability to be able to peer through those clouds and tell us actually what's going on in the atmosphere below that. Um, and that will tell us about the 3D structure of the Great Red Spot. OK, how do we benefit from this? Because Jupiter is, as you said, there's no solid surface. because It's mainly yeah. made up of gases. So That's it's a right. gaseous, is it a planet? It is. It's called a gas giant planet. Uh, and our atmospheric models that tell us whether it's going to rain today or tomorrow are based on our understanding of how an atmosphere works. The problem with it, the Earth is that there's all the pesky land that gets in the way of our modelling. So we need somewhere without a land that we can run an ideal experiment to find out how an atmosphere works. And that's, that's the good thing about Jupiter's atmosphere, is that there's no land there to get in the way. So uh, as citizens of the Earth, we can learn things about our own situation from, from this. Absolutely. The overall goal of Juno is to find out the composition of Jupiter, what it's made of, and what the interior structure is like. That'll tell us the story of Jupiter's formation 4.6 billion years ago. And that is the story of our own formation, the formation of the Earth. Jupiter formed first, everything else formed after, and Jupiter is implicated in hurling comets and things towards the Earth, which delivered the water that we drink in our cups of tea. Can we talk about Juno itself? Yeah. Um, so in terms of distance it is from the gas planet, um, and in terms of how long its journey is going to be, what, what, what are we expecting? Juno arrived last year, about this time last year, and it's been orbiting in a very special orbit that takes it very close to Jupiter, just skimming over the cloud tops, about 3,000 kilometres above the cloud tops. It sounds a long way. It but does that's sound actually, a long way. That's, a, that's very small on, on a scale of Jupiter, which is 10 times the size of the Earth. It's smaller than the width of the Great Red Spot, actually. So um, it dives in, it gets this data on Jupiter's magnetic field and gravity and the atmosphere, and then it goes out on an orbit and then it comes back in again. Um, I was reading that originally there was no plan to put a camera on, so we wouldn't have got these pictures back from Juno. Is that right? That's right. The, the, the primary science of Juno doesn't require a camera. However, I think NASA quite rightly realised that it'd be an absolute crime to send a mission, a space mission to Jupiter and not put a camera on it. So it's primarily there as a pub an education and public outreach instrument. And the whole public, everybody around the world can get involved. Talk to us about citizen scientists. So how are they being encouraged to get involved? 
So there is no science team behind Juno Cam. The public go onto the Juno Cam website, just search for, for Juno Cam, and you can identify features that you would like Juno Cam to look at. Uh, you can then advocate for that particular feature. Everybody can vote. Um, the top uh, most popular ones are uh, uh, selected. And then the images are downloaded. They're put immediately onto the website, the Juno Cam website, and then they're processed by citizen scientists around the world. Uh, and you, the result is the spectacular images that we've been seeing. Thank goodness they put that camera on, eh? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Nichols, thank you very, very much for talking to us this morning. Now you know. Now you know. Indeed. Don't forget your camera. <laughs>